Hello YouTube, this is Morgan, Airspeed Prime here with my next Boruto anime review. This one's going to be for episode 257. So uh, we get another kind of a one-off uh, episode here, though it seems to have a minor connection into what they're doing with the next episode, which is kind of interesting. That was a nice little connection that I didn't quite expect until I saw the preview. But we get, as we saw from last time, uh, it's preview... This interesting episode where Konohamaru is going to fill in for Naruto on this sort of like guest starring role in the latest uh, Kagamasa movie. So we, we've seen this kind of referenced before, the whole idea of you know, you know, Kagamasa and the, the movie kind of franchise that like Boruto was into it. And I think we've even had stuff related to like the, the actual filming and production to a certain degree. So uh, coming back to this was like, okay, I, I remember little bits and pieces about this. Um, but what they do in this episode is they obviously give Konohamaru the spotlight here. But then they also have the episode play with effectively the theme of, you know, phoning in the latest movie to make money and uh, not doing it in the, you know, truly rewarding, creative way that would make the movie truly great. And, you know, the producers kind of feeling that like once Kagamasa is in it, it'll it'll sell well and, and it will make lots of money. And, and that's the only kind of point here. Um, I think they eventually get around to some nice kind of little moments of like the director becoming inspired and realizing that he wants to, to do things like the old way um, like he used to and you know everyone is inspired by that. Konohamaru wants to do it as well because he's trying to prove that you know he can do this for Naruto um, and make Naruto look good on screen. But the producer is the one who doesn't like this and feels that uh, they're doing things the wrong way and he wants to do it all with CG and uh, they can do a lot with CG here but uh, you know it's it's it makes for sort of this sense of like the filming process just feels very you know disappointing for, for most of the characters. Um, they get fired, like, they, there's some drama here, the producer's made out to be a real kind of villain in this, because he fires everyone over this, which seemed, like, incredibly harsh, uh, only, I think, Konohamaru and, like, the, basically the actors are left behind, but then they randomly cut to, like, the CG guy has been captured in an actual, like, kidnapping incident in the streets, and... The, this inspires them to film it because it's reminiscent of like scenes that they're going to actually have in the movie um, and it, you know Konohamaru gets to resolve an actual incident and kind of show that value and, and if, it effectively it's just through filming this real incident it shows the producers that yes we should incorporate this into the actual movie and you know the inspiration the creativity comes back in but they are reasonable about it in that it's not just a complete shift and they're not trying to make it out that using CG is this terrible thing. The director actually is like, almost surprisingly, make sure to have the CG crew ready to uh, spice up the those shots and make it look really good. And just kind of highlighting that he wants to use the technology, but in the right way. Not to do everything but to for the effect that it's meant to have and you know in, in that sense it's it's a kind of relatively current topic you know cg in movies gets talked about a lot and especially like you know in the last week or so you know with the new thor movie coming out and there being a lot of sort of criticism counterpoints about the cg in that movie and if it's good or not does it look good um it's surprisingly, you know, um, of the day in a way for them to to bring up this topic now. Um, it obviously feels a little detached to a degree from a lot of what we're doing here. In that, in that sense, it is still a filler episode to a certain degree in that it doesn't have anything particularly important to say. In that about the most important thing for one of the main characters is like the little lesson that Konohamaru learns, which is arguably the weakest part of the episode because for Konohamaru to learn the lesson, they have to have him do something wrong. And in this case, it's that apparently he carries around like chipped, unsharpened kunais with him, or at least this one that he uses is not looked after and he's 
kind of phoning it in himself as a shinobi, which doesn't really feel like him all that much. So there's always just that weird sense with Konohamaru that, oh cool, they're giving him a little bit of a spotlight in this episode. They're, they're giving him some screen time and letting him do something. But he's using a kunai that can't even cut through paper. What are you doing? Like, what are you trying to do here with this episode? Especially when the main takeaway is just that he learns from what the the crew learned from, you know, the, the, the way they want to do the movies to go back to his roots and be more dedicated to every aspect of his craft as a shinobi. And so you see him at the end, you know, sharpening, polishing his kunai. And it's like, okay, but... I never bought into the fact that Konohamaru is that sort of, you know, you know, forgetful that he just doesn't care about his uh, tools, that he's just uh, thinks he can do everything without needing to do that and he just forget about it. That doesn't really feel like him. The other point is that it is just a random kunai, so like the amount of characters who just throw them and don't seem to pick them up later on and that they're almost disposable, it kind of feels like, uh... Is it a usual thing that, like, you know, the shinobis make heavy use out of just, like, one kunai and have to look after it for ages? I'd understand it if it was, like, a different weapon. Like, if it was the the, the, the other type of blades that kind of he uses and, and stuff like that. But, no, it is just this random kunai and they even show a scene of it not being able to cut the explosive tag. So he has to do the Rasengan, which is a cool moment for him. But it's not cool enough that, to me, it counters this really, in a way, like, almost disturbing kind of point that you're making about Konohamaru of, like, this slight element of incompetence that he has that I've never felt as part of the character. And look, it's reading into it too much, but it's, it's a problem with the writing that they felt that they could throw that in there with the idea that they'll counter it with just Konohamaru getting the screen time when... I think net you come out of this episode just sort of feeling like, um, yeah, they still haven't done anything particularly significant with Konohamaru. We have this like every time they try and do something with Konohamaru, they, you know, it, it comes down to, I suppose, where the fans view the character, I suppose, versus where the creative team views the character of like fans. I, I think people think fans are viewing Konohamaru as being like up here. Like, all the way up here. Like, he's he's just below some of the most h highly powerful characters in the entire series. When I think people are more, like, in the middle, slightly above middle, kind of highlighting that, you know, he's in that sort of Kakashi-esque position. He's maybe not as good as Kakashi, but he's meant to be there and thereabouts. Whereas, they seem like they just want to present him as being, like, slightly above your random uh, Jonin character. And that's it. And so, you know, they, they, they never really do enough with the character to make it feel like he's growing. Like, this is someone who Naruto helped to train, at least to some extent. And he's still not quite getting the presentation that he needs. And people aren't asking for him to suddenly become the hero of the story. It's just, can he have a fight that he wins? That, like, something crazy doesn't have to happen and stuff like that. Can he just do something that makes... That shows the level that he's actually at. And just a little thing like this. Of him being careless with his equipment. Is just not a good thing. And it just shows a kind of carelessness in the writing. More so than anything. Um, otherwise, like I said, it, it was fun. But relatively inconsequential. That's what I'd say about it. It was vastly better than the last episode, which, even though it sort of included more of our usual cast, was just so by the numbers, so everything that you don't want in a filler episode. This at least was something sort of unique, different, and you're fine with it for an episode because we're going to move on. The setup for next week is basically some of the setup from the start, that the reason Naruto was not able to do the filming was that uh, Himawari won a trip to like a hot spring. So it looks like the whole Uzumaki family, including Kawaki now, is going to be going to that. And that's what we're going to be doing next time out. So most of the um, clips showed like Boruto and Kawaki, which I get why they want to do that. But I am hoping we get more with, you know, Hinata's going to be there. 
Himawari is going to be there, Naruto. I hope that there is a section of the episode that at least focuses on the other characters. Because, you know, Boruto and Kawaki are going to get all the screen time in the world in, you know, upcoming manga arcs. Um, they're going to have times when they do slightly more serious, um, you know, build-up episodes. They don't need to devote this episode to it. So I hope Himawari gets a little bit of a chance to shine in this one. But uh, I think that's pretty much everything I want to say about this one. So fun, but a notable element of like, you thought you could throw that into this episode and not mean much, but it still is highly representative of where you view Konohamaru as a character. But um, in the comments, let me know what your thoughts were. But that's been the video. Thanks for watching and bye.